Welcome to another episode of One Wingspan Above, where we discuss everything to do with Grand Effect. In this episode, we get into how Grand Effect increases lifts, and we dive into what DARPA are up to with their Liberty Lifter, as well as what's up with the flying ship craft. G'day, Paul Dutch here. The previous episode, I talked about the ground effect phenomenon, where a wing gets really close to the surface so that it increases the lift and it decreases the drag, basically making the wing more efficient. The reasons for why these two things happen are different, but they happen at the same time and are hard to entangle. But let's explore the increase in lift in this episode, as there are some myths floating around on the internet around this phenomenon. The increase in lift is called the chord dominated ground effect, which we'll discuss today. The chord is the line that runs from the front, the leading edge, to the back, the trailing edge of the wing. Many discussions on ground effect report on the fact that skin machines fly on a cushion of compressed air. This would really only be the case where a wing would fly really close to the ground, like say when an Ekranoplan is directing air from its PAR engines under the wing to take off, or a tandem skim machine that stays very close to the surface. This effect starts at lower than about 10% of cord length away, and most of the time the trailing edge is very close to the surface, sometimes by using flaps and there are end plates on the ends of the wings, essentially boxing in the volume of air. There's been a lot of research on wings and ground effects, and these are the graphs that normally get produced. This is out of a research project a long time ago that I conducted for the European Seabus project. The Seabus was a large skim machine ferry with hydrofoils permanently in the water. The top line is the pressure on top of the wing, and the bottom line is the pressure under the wing. I want to point out that this shows that the top of the wing actually does most of the lifting of the wing, as the differential in negative pressure on top is higher than the positive pressure at the bottom. Even with atmospheric pressure under it, the wing will produce lift. Here you can see that what changes when in chord dominated ground effect is that the pressure above the wing pretty much stays the same, but the bottom increases slightly increasing overall lift, a slight increase in pressure where no real compression is actually needed has got a large impact over the whole surface area of the wing. When the wing is between approximately one tenth and full cord length away, lift is still increased, but skim machines don't generally compress air under their wings. There is too much air leaking away for that. There is an increase in pressure, which still accounts for most of the increase in lift. Some explain the increase in lift that it comes from the decrease in downwash from the wing that gets redirected from the surface, and as such the lift factor that gets decomposed from the overall force factor of a wing is larger. Over a quarter away from the surface, there is pretty much no increased lift. For example, Regent's sea gliders with their long, thin wings that are put on top of the fuselage, the wing is simply too far away to experience increased lift. The US Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, released a request for information in mid-August 2021 where they're said to be looking for a wing and ground effect skin machine for the US military. DARPA has set some requirements for the skin machine, but provided no data themselves. Alexander Wallen, a DARPA official overseeing the program, said that the agency decided to move forward with the Liberty Lifter program after receiving what they say was enthusiastic feedback from the industry in response to the request for information. While DARPA has a dual hulled concept in mind, Wallen said the agency expected to receive proposals from industry in response to their request for design work, with two contracts up for grabs and scheduled to be awarded later this year. DARPA hopes to build and fly a prototype in the next five years. We'll follow DARPA along their journey. Flying Ship is a group of what seems to be mostly business people who have a render of a skim machine with some vague details about weight and speed of the skim machine. 
They are asking for investments to get their flying ship projects off the ground. And there is mention of them trying to get DARPA's intention, possibly as part of the request for information, though their concept does not fit the bill. Via YouTube, you can find out that the scale model they have commissioned is made by a YouTube RC builder. He seems to be a very skilled RC builder, but not an aeronautical engineer. It seems that the craft is highly reliant on the active height control system to keep it in ground effect. It doesn't seem to be stable in ground effect without it. And I must say, I could be mistaken, but this flying ship project looks a whole lot like a scheme where money that gets invested will not be spent well and will taint the reputation of skim machines. Again, I could be mistaken, but I've seen many of these so-called investment schemes that you never hear of again and renders never go anywhere uh, towards a real practical craft. Let's hope that I'm wrong. We'll follow flying ship along their progress. For now, thank you very much for watching this episode of One Wingspan Above. Keep in mind to subscribe to keep in the loop and we'll see you next episode.